Hey, welcome to this week's English lesson. In this English lesson, I'm going to teach you nine confusing things that Americans say. Are you ready? Well then, I'm teacher Tiffany. Let's jump right in. All right, the very first thing that I want to teach you is freshen up. Freshen up. Up. Now you've probably heard this before and you've probably wondered what does freshen up mean? Well, when we say freshen up, we're literally saying that we want to refresh ourselves by washing or changing into clean clothes. For example, I want you to imagine this situation. You're hanging out with your friends. You've been out all day shopping. You went out to eat. You've been walking around the mall. You went to an outdoor mall and it's a hot day. So you're a little bit sweaty. And then you get a text message from your boyfriend or your girlfriend for our guys. And he says, I'll say boyfriend for me. Hey, Tiff, let's go out to eat tonight. Wait a minute. I said, Hey, what, what time do you want to go out? He says in about an hour, I said, sure, let's do it. Now, listen, I've been outside all day. You've been outside all day with your friends shopping. You're sweaty, you're tired. So what do you need to do before you see your boyfriend, before you see your girlfriend, you need to make sure you smell fresh. You need to change your clothes, right? You want to freshen up a bit. Ha <laughs> ha. You got it right again. Refresh oneself by washing or changing into clean clothes. You want to be presentable in English. We say freshen up. Good job. One more time after me, freshen up. Excellent. Excellent. Now I'm going to go on to the second one, but I want to remind you if you need help with your pronunciation, if you want to learn more words and just practice your English, don't forget to get my app English with Tiffany. The link is right in the description and you will improve your English guaranteed. All right, now let's move on to the second one. The second confusing thing that Americans say is grounded grounded again after me grounded. Excellent. Now, you know, ground that just refers to the dirt, right? The floor. But when we say grounded, we're literally meaning a child or young person who is grounded being not allowed to go out as a punishment. Now, during our story time, I am going to tell you about a time when I got grounded. I was grounded by my parents and I'll tell you the whole story at the end. But again, grounded just refers to a period of time known as a punishment when a young person or a child, they get in trouble and they're not allowed to go out. You must stay in this house. You can't see your friends. You can't play online. You are grounded. It's a form of punishment. Another word for punishment. Now I want to ask you this. When you were a child, were you a good kid or a bad kid? D tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. Maybe you got in trouble every once in a while, right? And when you got in trouble, your parents would say, okay, no phones. Or they would say, Hey, uh, -uh you can't go outside and play. You were grounded. You couldn't go out to play with your friends. Makes sense, right? Okay. So it's not confusing anymore. When you hear an American say grounded on TV or even in a conversation that's happening around you, now you'll know what they're meaning. You got it. Okay. Let's move on to the third confusing thing that Americans say. Americans say running errands again, running errands. Now, you know that I love to exercise. I love going to the gym and working out. And I also love running, but when we say running errands, we're not literally outside running around. No running errands. This just means to go out to buy or do something literally. For example, right now I'm teaching you this English lesson, right? But after this English lesson, I need to go get some groceries from the store. True story. <laughs> and I have to go to the store to get groceries. I need to get some lunch and I also need to get a few other things. So I have to go out to buy or do something. So 
after this lesson, I need to go run some errands. Makes sense, right? In English, we say running errands and it doesn't mean we're physically running. We're not out here being like Usain Bolt. No, we are actually just going out to buy or do something. Hey, don't worry. I'll be back. I just need to go run some errands real quick. Makes sense. All right, you got it. So let's move on to the next confusing thing that Americans say. The next thing that we say that is confusing is crash at someone's place, crash at someone's place. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Crash. Normally the word crash refers to two objects, boom, hitting each other or boom, clashing, right? We say crash. But when we say crash at someone's place, it literally just means to sleep at someone else's house, apartment, etc for a temporary period of time. It literally means to stay with someone, to sleep at their home or their apartment for a little while. For example, my best friend recently moved to another state, another true story. And I have a plan to go visit her. Now, when I go visit her, she has her own apartment. So I am going to be able to sleep at her apartment. She has an extra room an extra bed. So I'm going to be sleeping at my friend's apartment. In other words, I'm about to go crash at my best friend's apartment. You got it right now. I just said it very naturally. I'm about to go crash at my best friend's apartment, but now you understand. Ah, Tiffany is just saying that she is going to sleep at her best friend's apartment. You already, you already get it, right? You're starting to understand American English a bit more. So let's keep going. You got that one. The next one, a little bit confusing, a little bit confusing. Put up your Dukes, put up your Dukes. Now repeat after me, put up your Dukes. Excellent. Now, you might, maybe you haven't, maybe you've never heard this before. Maybe you have never heard this expression. So you're really confused. Don't worry. It literally just means to raise one's clenched clench means this, right? You're drawing your fingers in tightly to raise one's clenched fists in front of one's body and stand in a threatening or defiant manner in preparation for a fist fight caught you off guard. Didn't I <laughs> again? So put your Dukes up, put up your Dukes, your Dukes referring to your hands, basically your fists, bringing your fists up as if you are ready to fight someone. Now I, when I was in college, I took Muay Thai for a little bit. So I, I know a little bit of Muay Thai and we had to put up our Dukes. Now we didn't say Dukes because Muay Thai in that practice, you don't say Dukes, but Putting up your dukes again just means putting up your fists and getting ready to fight, putting up your fists in a fighting stance. So you can say, Hey, she just put up her dukes or a hey, put up your dukes. I'm ready to fight in English. We're just saying, putting up your clenched fists and being ready to fight makes sense right now. You will hear this in movies in dramas in conversations because we, as Americans, we use this, but for you as an English learner, it can be a little tricky to understand it sometimes a little confusing, but not now. Oh no, because you understand it, right? Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Here we go. This one cats out of the bag cats out of the bag. Just literally just means to reveal a secret carelessly or by mistake. Oops. Ah, the cat is out of the bag or cats out of the bag. I'm sorry. Someone told you a secret. I said, Hey, pss, pss, pss. let me tell you something. Did you know that Susan and Mark were dating? <gasps> what? They told, Hey, don't tell anybody though. You said, okay. I won't tell anyone that Susan and Mark are dating five minutes. Go by your friend comes up girl. Oh my goodness. Did you know that Susan and Mark are dating? <gasps> Oops. I guess the cat's out of the bag again to reveal a secret carelessly or by mistake. You got it, right? You got it again. In English, we say cats out of the bag. 
It's just an expression we use. So now you don't have to be confused anymore. Here we go. Let's move on to the next one. The next one is actually very similar to cats out of the bag. This one is spill the beans, spill the beans after me. Here we go. Spill the beans. Excellent. Again, spill the beans. Great job. Now this literally just means to reveal secret information unintentionally on accident or indiscreetly. Again, just like cats out of the bag, you've revealed something that should not have been revealed. You spilled the beans. Hey man, don't spill the beans. Don't reveal the secret. Don't let the cat out of the bag. Not confusing anymore, right? Okay, good. So now you understand spill the beans. Now this next one, don't cry over spilled milk again after me. Don't cry over spilled milk. Now I'm going to explain the meaning of this expression. And then I'm going to give you an example from my personal experience. All right, here we go. This just means this phrase means that there's no point in being upset over something that has already happened and cannot be changed. Listen, you can't change it. So don't be upset about it. If you can't change it, don't be upset about it again. Don't cry over spilled milk. Now this is a phrase that I actually like a lot because you know, as a business owner, as your English teacher, you know, I'm very busy and there are many things going on. And when you're running a business, sometimes things happen. Sometimes a, a website might not work or sometimes uh, something might fail. And instead of crying over spilled milk, when you can't change it, you just have to move forward and fix it. This pops into my head all the time when something happens and ah, I, I wish it hadn't happened. But when I realize I can't change the past instead of me <sighs> getting angry and, and looking at it and saying, Oh, how did this happen? Normally I say, okay, how can we fix it? I can't cry over spilled milk. It's already happened. Let's move forward. Let's fix it. This is something that I think I might've gotten from my father. My dad is like that. You just keep moving. We say stick and move another thing. <laughs> hey, it happened. All right, let's, let's pivot. Let's fix it now. Don't cry over it. It's done. Let's move forward and fix it. So again, don't cry over spilled milk. This is something that I actually have an internal conversation with myself a lot. Hey, you can't fix it tip. You can't change it. So let's fix it and move forward. Make sense. All right, now let's go to the next thing. The next confusing thing that Americans say, jump on the bandwagon. Again, jump on the bandwagon. Now this is something that is also very interesting. Jump on the bandwagon, jump on the bandwagon. Now this is also something that's very, very interesting. Now jump on the bandwagon. It sounds a little confusing, but it literally just means to join others in doing or supporting something fashionable or likely to be successful. Hey, everyone else is doing it. I'm going to do it too. Or everyone else likes it. So I'm going to like it too. In English, we say jump on the bandwagon. Kind of makes sense. Like, Hey, everybody has that yellow coat. I guess I need to also get the yellow coat. She's just jumping on the bandwagon. Make sense. All right. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I hope you are no longer confused. Don't forget to come back next time for the next English lesson. And until then, remember to speak English. You still there? <laughs> you know what time it is. It's story time. Hey, I said it's story time. Now, earlier, I told you that I was going to tell you a story about a time when I was grounded. You remember what grounded means, right? So when I was younger, I think I might have been ooh, 10 years old, maybe nine or 10 years old. I loved two things. I loved to play outside with my friends and I loved to watch TV, specifically cartoons, right? I was very young. So 
I loved both of those things. I loved, yes, playing outside for hours with my friends and then watching cartoons. But one day, and I don't remember what I did, I got in trouble. And my mom said, Tiffany, she said my middle name and then my last name. In America, if you're in an African-American home, when they say all three of your names, your first, middle, and last name, you are in trouble. And my mom said all three of my names. I said, oh, no, Lord, this is not going to be good. She said, get over here now. I walked over to her. I knew I was in trouble. I said, Lord, please, please, Lord, please, Lord. I didn't want a spanking. She said, you are grounded for the next two weeks. Initially, I was happy because I wasn't going to get a spanking. And then I realized, wait a minute, two weeks. That means I can't go outside to play with my friends and I can't watch TV. I said, oh, no, Lord, oh, no. She said, Tiffany, go to your room. All you can do is your homework, and that's it. And she said, you know what? No, Tiff. Also, I want you to read a book, a specific book. I said, man, I can't go out with my friends. I can't watch cartoons. I can only do my homework. And my only thing that's supposed to bring me pleasure or enjoyment is reading a book. She said, I want you to read a book called Gifted Hands. Hands. Now, I remember even to this day, so Gifted Hands was about Ben Carson. Ben Carson is a world-famous surgeon. She said, I want you to read that book, and you better finish it. I said, okay, yes, yes, ma'am. I was respectful. But I remember being grounded, and during that two-week period, I finished the book Gifted Hands. And, you know, parents know what they're doing. Yes, parents have to teach their children and discipline them and sometimes ground them, but they also are trying to help their children develop. You see, that book, Gifted Hands, that I still remember to this day, spoke about Ben Carson and how his life changed and how he started reading tons of books and how he started studying well in school and how he really changed our world, how he changed the lives of so many people when he put his mind to it. And at that time, I was already a very studious individual. That's from our last lesson. I already enjoyed studying, but something happened when I read that book. I realized, wait a minute, I can also change the world if I put my, nine, my mind to it. If I make an effort, I can help people around the world. I was nine. And at that moment, reading that book, I was inspired to also do something great to help people around the world. Fast forward 30-something years, and what's happening now? I'm your teacher. You are living in another country, but we're connecting, and I'm helping to change your life. I want to help you achieve all of your goals. So what happened to me when I was about nine years old, getting grounded and being forced to read the book Gifted Hands is now still affecting me right now enabling me to help you achieve your goals. So even though it's not nice to be grounded, sometimes you can learn valuable lessons. Hope you enjoyed this story time, and I'll talk to you in the next lesson.